Telstar is the name of various communication satellites. The first two Telstar satellites were experimental and nearly identical. Telstar 1 launched on top of a Thor Delta rocket on July 10, 1962. It successfully relayed through space the first television pictures, telephone calls, and fax images, and provided the first lived transatlantic television feed. Telstar 2 launched May 7, 1963. Telstar 1 and 2 are Euro though no longer functional a Euro still orbit the Earth. Description, belonging to AT&T, the original Telstar was part of a multinational agreement among AT&T, Bell Telephone Laboratories, NASA, GPO and the National PTT to develop experimental satellite communications over the Atlantic Ocean. Bell Labs held a contract with NASA, paying the agency for each launch, independent of success. The U.S. ground station a Euro built by Bell Labs a Euro was Andover Earth Station, in Andover, Maine. The main British ground station was at Goonhilly Downs in southwestern England. The BBC, as international coordinator, used this location. The standards 525-405 conversion equipment was researched and developed by the BBC and located in the BBC Television Centre, London. The French ground station was at Plume Boda in northwestern France. The satellite was built by a team at Bell Telephone Laboratories that included John Robinson Pierce, who created the project. Rudy Kimpner, who invented the traveling wave tube transponder that the satellite used. And James M. Early, who designed its transistors and solar panels. The satellite is roughly spherical, measures 34.5 inches in length, and weighs about 170 pounds. Its dimensions were limited by what would fit on one of NASA's Delta rockets. Telstar was spin-stabilized, and its outer surface was covered with solar cells capable of generating 14 watts of electrical power. The original Telstar had a single innovative transponder that could relay data, a single television channel, or multiplex telephone circuits. Since the spacecraft spun, it required an array of antennas around its equator for uninterrupted microwave communication with Earth. An omnidirectional array of small cavity antenna elements around the satellite's equator received 6 GHz microwave signals to relay back to ground stations. The transponder converted the frequency to 4 GHz, amplified the signals in a traveling wave tube, and retransmitted them omnidirectionally via the adjacent array of larger box-shaped cavities. The prominent helical antenna received telecommands from a ground station. Launched by NASA aboard a Delta rocket from Cape Canaveral on July 10, 1962, Telstar 1 was the first privately sponsored space launch. A medium-altitude satellite, Telstar was placed in an elliptical orbit completed once every 2 hours and 37 minutes, inclined at an angle of approximately 45 degrees to the equator, with perigee about 952 km from Earth and apogee about 5,933 km from Earth. This is in contrast to most of today's communications satellites, which travel in circular geostationary orbits. Due to its non-geosynchronous orbit, Telstar's availability for transatlantic signals was limited to the 20 minutes in each 2.5-hour orbit when the satellite passed over the Atlantic Ocean. Ground antennas had to track the satellite with a pointing error of less than 0.06 degrees as it moved across the sky at up to 1.5 degrees per second. Since the transmitters and receivers on Telstar were not powerful, ground antennas had to be huge. Bell Laboratory engineers designed a large horizontal conical horn antenna with a parabolic reflector at its mouth that redirected the beam. This particular design had very low cider lobes, and thus made very low receiving system noise temperatures possible. The aperture of the antennas was 3,600 square feet. The antennas were 177 feet long and weighed 380 short tons. Mumi Iwama and Jan Norton of Bell Laboratories were in charge of designing and building the electrical portions of the azimuth elevation system that steered the antennas. The antennas were housed in radomes the size of a 14-story office building. Two of these antennas were used, one in Andover, Maine, and the other in France at Plume Boda. The GPO antenna at Goonhilly Downs in Great Britain was a conventional 26-meter diameter paraboloid. In service, 
Telstar One relayed its first, and non-public, television picture is a Euro a flag outside Andover Earth Station a Euro to Plume at Boda on July 11, 1962. Almost two weeks later, on July 23, at 3 p.m. EDT, it relayed the first publicly available live transatlantic television signal. The broadcast was made possible in Europe by Eurovision and in North America by NBC, CBS, ABC, and the CBC. The first public broadcast featured CBS's Walter Cronkite and NBC's Chet Huntley in New York, and the BBC's Richard Dimblebee in Brussels. The first pictures were the Statue of Liberty in New York and the Eiffel Tower in Paris. The first broadcast was to have been remarks by President John F. Kennedy, but the signal was acquired before the president was ready, so engineers filled the lead in time with a short segment of a televised game between the Philadelphia Phillies and the Chicago Cubs at Wrigley Field. The batter, Tony Taylor, was seen hitting a ball pitched by Cal Coons to the right fielder George Altman. From there, the video switched first to Washington, D.C., then to Cape Canaveral, Florida, to the Seattle World's Fair, then to Quebec and finally to Stratford, Ontario. The Washington segment included remarks by President Kennedy, talking about the price of the American dollar, which was causing concern in Europe. When Kennedy denied that the United States would devalue the dollar it immediately strengthened on world markets. Cronkite later said that we all glimpsed something of the true power of the instrument we had wrought. That evening, Telstar One also relayed the first telephone call transmitted through space, and it successfully transmitted faxes, data, and both live and tape television, including the first live transmission of television across an ocean from Andover, Maine, U.S. to Goonhilly Downs, England and Plume at Boda, France. In August 1962, Telstar One became the first satellite used to synchronize time between two continents, bringing the United Kingdom and the United States to within one microsecond of each other. Telstar One, which had ushered in a new age of the commercial use of technology, became a victim of technology during the Cold War. The day before Telstar One launched, a U.S. high-altitude nuclear bomb had energized the Earth's Van Allen belt where Telstar One went into orbit. This vast increase in a radiation belt, combined with subsequent high-altitude blasts, including a Soviet test in October, overwhelmed Telstar's fragile transistors. It went out of service in November 1962, after handling over 400 telephone, telegraph, facsimile and television transmissions. It was restarted by a workaround in early January 1963. The additional radiation associated with its return to full sunlight once again caused a transistor failure, this time irreparably, and Telstar One went out of service on February 21, 1963. Experiments continued, and by 1964, two Telstars, two relay units, and two Syncom units had operated successfully in space. Syncom 2 was the first geosynchronous satellite and its successor, Syncom 3, broadcast pictures from the 1964 Summer Olympics in Tokyo. The first commercial geosynchronous satellite was Intelsat I launched in 1965. Newer Telstars, subsequent Telstar satellites were advanced commercial geosynchronous spacecraft that share only their name with Telstar 1 and 2. The second wave of Telstar satellites launched with Telstar 301 in 1983, followed by Telstar 302 in 1984 and by Telstar 303 in 1985. The next wave, starting with Telstar 401, came in 1993, which was lost in 1997 due to a magnetic storm, and then Telstar 402 was launched but destroyed shortly after in 1994. It was replaced in 1995 by Telstar 402R, eventually renamed Telstar 4. Telstar 10 was launched in China in 1997 by APT Satellite Company, Ltd. In 2003, Telstar's 4 a Euro 8 and 13 a Euro Laurel Skinnet's North American fleet a Euro were sold to Intelsat. Telstar 4 suffered complete failure prior to the handover. The others were renamed the Intelsat Americas 5, 6, etc. At the time of the sale, Telstar 8 was still under construction by Space Systems Laurel, 
and it was finally launched on June 23, 2005, by Sea Launch. Telstar 18 was launched in June 2004 by Sea Launch. The upper stage of the rocket underperformed, but the satellite used its significant station keeping fuel margin to achieve its operational geostationary orbit. It has enough onboard fuel remaining to allow it to exceed its specified 13 year design life. See also, List of Communications Satellite Firsts. References External links Walter Cronkite on the first broadcast using Telstar from the July 23, 2002, episode of All Things Considered, May 1962 National Geographic Magazine article on Telstar from Porticus.org, Telstar 1, First Private Communication Satellite, 1963 Educational Documentary on YouTube, Stamps and Envelopes Related to Telstar I from the National Postal Museum. Real-time tracking of Telstar 1 from N2YO.com, official providers page for Telstar 11N from IMS.